Hey folks, welcome to the show today. We're here at Lake Tawakany, just an hour east of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, and we're going to be chasing giant blue catfish in super, super shallow water. This is my favorite time of the year to catch these giant fish that are four foot long in just two foot of water. I better get my shallow water anchors because Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That is a fish. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> it's time for the only program that brings you real time fishing reports from the Southwest region every week. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Woo! This is Let's Fish. Hey guys, Captain Michael Littlejohn here with Lake Tawakini Guide Service. And we're here at Open Water Lodge, which is Texas' newest fishing destination right here in the heart of the open water on Lake Tawakini, which is home of some of the biggest blue catfish and hybrid striper that swim anywhere in our region. And today, we're trading in the deep water rigs it's March, the grass is greening up, and we're going shallow. We're gonna catch these fish, four foot long fish, and one to two foot of water on rod and reel. We're also gonna have the weekly fishery report in your local area, but first, let's get back to the studios for your weekly planner. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Let's Fish. These lunar tables are predicting fair game fish activity throughout both days this weekend. Peak game fish activity begins before the sunrise around 4.56 Saturday and 5.58 Sunday morning. Evening activity will begin at 5.21 on Saturday and 6.23 on Sunday. Plan to be on the water either early or late for the best action. Expect the sun to rise at 7.40 and set at 7.36 and evenings will feature a moon that is 71% visible. We'll be right back to check all of the current fishing reports from throughout the area and I'll return with Bassmaster Elite Angler Mark Daniels Jr. on this week's Ask the Pro feature. Stick with us. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury. Go boldly. Lorance, America's number one fish finder. Lose, feel the difference. And by Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Get our free fishing guide at orangebeach.com. The fish are trying to move from deep to shallow, and what we're doing is we're in a transition area. All right, oh, that's a nice fish there. That fish is bigger than I thought he was. I think one of the one of the coolest times of the year is when we get to come up here and and catch these fish up in this super shallow water. You know, every year, the, you know, the water starts warming up and then these fish, they just make a major move from, from deep water to shallow water. And I know for you, you, you know, you'd rather catch them, yep. you'd rather catch them shallow than any other time. Than any other time, yeah. Yeah. What's going on, guys, is we've had a couple days of really, really warm weather. Uh, preceded by some cold weather and our water is spiking really fast. Matter of fact, I'm marking almost 56 degrees right now, which is just oh, incredible. 57. Yeah. yeah, 57 degrees. And the main lake's 52 degrees. And so what's happened, there's a dynamic going on right now and these fish are really moving up shallow. We just had a big cart right here just jump. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on and these fish, believe it or not, a, a four foot long fish can move up into two or three foot of water. And uh, we're gonna get on up in here a little ways and we're gonna, we're gonna see if old big girl wants to. Wants to play? If she wants to eat this morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey folks, Captain Greg Verm here for this week's Texas Coastal Report. Hey, this week we're gonna start way down south at Port Mansfield. Hey, Captain Wayne Davis is my expert at the Laguna Madre. And he just told me fishing has been great. The key is timing between the cool fronts. Be on the water right before the front hits and two days after she blows through. Hey, the big factor before the front is the strong southerly winds being pulled from the northerly system. Hey, it makes the water dirty, but don't be scared. The specks and reds are still actively feeding in the stained water. K Wiggler Willow Tails and the famous K Wiggler Paddle Tail will get them. Now after the front, hey, the water's cold and Captain Wayne switches to a slow down approach bouncing K-Wiggler ball tails in knee to thigh deep water. Hey, 
Now let's move to Matagorda. Hey, more specific, East Matty. Awesome, awesome big speck action in three to four foot of water with the shell bottom. Corkies and soft plastics are getting them. Hey, we like to jump out of the boat this time of year and the big girls are biting. Hey, East Matagorda is extremely hot right now. Get down there and go fishing. Hey, remember, if you want to fish Galveston or Freeport, give me a call, check out our websites, and let's fish. Oh, oh, that's a little better fish there, guys. Oh, man. There he is. Not a bad fish. Well, I think the shallow water bite's gonna kick on as this wind is, is picking up. But listen, oh, look at him. Did you see him come up out there? Look at him, he's up on top throwing. Oh, look at him, look at look at all that. You see that splash back here? <laughs> oh, hey babe, grab this one here. Let's go ahead and reel this one up. All right, get your shad off my fish. <laughs> Guys, what's going on? These fish are staging. They're, you got a big group of fish that have been deep all winter and we're just finally starting to warm up. We've, we got, we've had south wind now for two days. The fish are trying to move from deep to shallow and what we're doing is we're in a transition area. And uh, these fish are moving up. They're headed shallow. They're headed to do their pre-spawn thing. And what we're doing is we're intersecting them. We're catching them uh, right on their way up to the shallow water. That's not bad, is he? All right, I'm gonna keep him. Oh, look at there. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, oh man. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much better than this. Oh look, he's going down now. I'm gonna bring him over here to this side and we'll get a good look at him here. I'll tell you what, there's nothing like catching. Nothing like catching these big fish on rod and reel. All right, oh, that's a nice fish there. That fish is bigger than I thought he was. All right, guys, this is a big fish and a long fight. We're gonna take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're gonna see just how big this fish is. Oh my gosh. Look at that toad. Golly, she gonna push 55, 60 pounds. Look at that. Oh, oh man. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much better than this. Oh look, he's going down now. I'll tell you what, there's nothing like catching. Nothing like catching these big fish on rod and reel. Alright, oh, that's a nice fish there. That fish is bigger than I thought he was. Alright. Oh man, golly. She done passed the boat up. <laughs> golly. Look at this. Look at this rod bend, guys. Oh, she gonna make a run. Oh, she's under the boat. Oh, she's under the boat. She's under the boat. Oh, there she is, there she is, there she is. Get ready, get ready. Oh, look, look at her. she just splashed you, didn't she? Oh, look at this drag coming off this reel. All right, here we go. All right. All right, get her in that net. Boy, that's a monster right there. Come on, net girl. Come on, net girl. There, you got her in, babe. Good job. Hey, hey, give me some right here. Give me some right there. Oh my gosh, man, that'll tire you out right there. That's like going to work almost. On three, here, come on, we'll do it together. One, two, three, ready? Oh yeah, boy, look at this. Oh my gosh. Look at that toad. Golly, she gonna push 55, 60 pounds. Good night. Look at that fish. All right guys, when you're gonna weigh a big fish like this, you know, you've got these fish grips, which by the way, these are a lifesaver, but man, you don't wanna hook your scale and weigh your fish up like this. I like to get these fish into, into the net, like this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the grips off of her. Like that. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my, my scale here, and I'm gonna actually weigh her in the net. Just like this right here. Get her in here good. 
she's a fatty. She's not real long, but she has got, definitely got the weight on her. I think she's gonna be bigger than we think she is. All right, here we go. Let's get her a weight on her here. All right, Terry, why don't you come call this weight? All right, you ready? Oh, golly. Oh, bigger than I 50, thought. 54, 53, 9. 50, 54 pounds. Yeah, 54, almost 55. Woo, good fish. She's bouncing. All right, guys. Well, we're going to get her released. And let's get back. Hey, come on. Good job. Let's, Wait, hold on. Right. Get, let's, get, let's get back in the water. Fish are biting. Let's get us another big fish here. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by, that's Fort Worth Fishing, one of DFW's premier guide services specializing in crappie. You want to catch some slabs this year? Give Fort Worth Fishing a call. Now this week we're going to start at Lake Sam Rayburn where in late February, two men, one team, one tournament, one day weighed in a five fish limit of 49 and a third pounds. Now I don't have to take my shoes off to tell you that that's an average of almost 10 pounds per fish. What a fantastic day and what a fantastic lake. Grass is the key at Sam Rayburn. Start your day deep somewhere between 10 and 15 feet on the outside edges of that grass. Fish your deep diving crankbaits and your Carolina rigs and maybe your A rigs to catch some of those deeper big fish. Move up through the water column and through the grass as the day progresses with your shallower baits. Now, crappie fishermen, you're going to want to go to Cedar Creek. The fish have been out on the main lake, but you're probably going to want to start in the mouths of the creeks and look in the deeper channels for those deeper fish. If we get enough warm weather, that's going to trigger them to move very shallow in the creeks, and they'll do this very quickly. So if you're not finding them out deep, move to the shallows. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes. Be sure and check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. Welcome back to Let's Fish Southwest, coming to you from Louisiana. Tell you what, Captain Kevin Broussard here. Gonna start off talking to you about Bill Lake down in Homa. Lots of speckled trout and redfish getting caught, but I tell you what, the Homa area is also producing lots of sockelet and bass. Tube jigs on the white perch, small spinner baits doing uh, very good on the bass. Right now, fishing along the whole Louisiana, South Louisiana, North Louisiana is great. We're gonna see you right here each and every week bringing you some local Louisiana fishing reports. Let's Fish Southwest, Captain Kevin Broussard. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Motor Guides Tour Pro, Cable Steer Motor with GPS Anchor, Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist, Strike King, Taiwan On, and by Low Boats. Welcome to Low Country. <laughs> oh, look at that, look at that. Get her, get her in the net, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay guys, there's a lot of different anchors on the market, but I'll tell you what, there's probably none that work as good in shallow water, well, really in any type of soft bottom as a box anchor, and that is a box anchor. It's basically made out of three inch plate, it's got five inch claws on it, and um, there's probably a lot of people watching right now that have never seen one of these, but I'm telling you right now, these are fantastic. I put about 36 inches of chain on it, and look at there, it hit bottom. Guys, we are only in like four foot of water. And we're going to be fishing in like two foot of water, uh, which is just probably crazy thinking we're fishing for fish that are like four foot long. But uh, we've looked, look, we've marked on our side imaging a big school on this side right here. And um, we're kind of, we're kind of nestled in. I'm not even going to put, I'm probably not going to put hardly any rods on this side of the boat and, and you look over here there's some trees over here it looks like it looks like that, that this is where you'd want to fish but we didn't mark the fish over here we marked the fish over on this side hold on i'll get the net hold on is that is that rod hung or is that we got a fish on this one i got one on there 
All right, hold on. I gotta get the net. Where is the net? Oh, here it is. Oh, dude. Shallow water, baby. Shallow water. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Get her, get her in the net. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey, give me some. Awesome. Awesome. Here, let's get this. Hey, why don't you pull some line off that reel there? Golly. Well, we got, we've got her. We had her in the, we had her in the anchor rope. We've got her in, I guess, this line right here. So. Oh my gosh, she's pretty big. She's pretty big. <clears throat> Woo! Man, she's bad. All right. Yep. Man, I never saw it go down. Did you see it? No. Look at the mud on her belly. Look, look where she's been up shallow like that. All the mud. We are in. It's almost six and a half, seven foot of water. Wow. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Look at that, man. Look at that. Golly. Hold on, I gotta get a picture of this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta get a picture. Big old mouth. I'm telling you, that's a heck of a fish right there. All right, ready? A lot of mud on that belly, huh? Here, put your hand more like right here. How you going? How you going? One, two, three. Hey, most of the early bass tournaments on Grand Lake are reinforcing what I told you last week. Most of the better bass right now are coming on umbrella rigs. Now, as a general rule, you want to keep your boat in 15 to 25 foot of water at least, whether you're throwing shallow or not, because most of those bass are being caught in that upper 6 to 10 foot of water. Now, most of the umbrella rigs are being rigged with 4 or 5 inch swim baits and mostly in the shad colors. Main lake areas or the mouth of the creeks more so than back in the creeks themselves, but you want deep water close by for sure. Now some bass can be caught on spinner baits now too, especially in the stained water where you have some wind action going on, but think about that same six to 10 foot depth for holding those fish. Bigger baits, bigger blades, slow rolling spinner baits. Good crappie tip for you right now, whether you're fishing from a boat or fishing from a dock, think about fishing your way down versus fishing your way back up. Other words, Drop that jig down four or five feet. Very little action to your rod tip. Work it there a little bit. Then start lowering down three or four feet at a time. Pay attention to where you get those bites because once you figure out what depth those crappie are, you can continue to catch them there until they move. Now, we've talked about it before. As a general rule, crappie feed up, so you'll want to always err on the shallow side. Stay above them. If you start down low, you might miss a lot of the action. Hey, it's a great time to be fishing here in Oklahoma, and you can catch them, but you can't catch them if you don't go, so let's fish. All right, guys, we're using, we're using fresh gizzard shad today that we actually caught this morning. I can't emphasize enough, when you're trying to target these big fish, how important it is to have fresh bait, fresh gizzard shad. Um, it doesn't have to be today caught, but in the last two to three days, I, Matter of fact, after three days, we get rid of our bait. Once it's once it's three days old, it doesn't get put in the freezer. It just gets thing. But here's what I like to do: I like to I like to scale my bait. Just get those scales off. Two reasons: one, it lets a little more oil out, I think, and number two, those scales don't get on your hooks. Look at that; it just comes right off. I don't like to get those in my boat, so I throw them right out in the water. And guys, what I'm going to do? Simply, if I'm if I'm dragging or drifting, I'll cut strips off. But I'm not. I'm anchored, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to cut a, a fresh chunk right here. Look at that fresh blood. Look how dark that is. And I'm going to come right here. And then I'm going to take that right there, and I'm going to first, I'm going to get rid of that. So I got two big old chunks out of there. On these, I call these one cutters. Just give them a little, little scale in there. And I'm going to come here, I'm going to cut right there. And then I'm going to do a couple little slides. Look at that. Look at that fresh blood just oozing out of there. That's what you want. Hey, folks, if you need a place to stay right on the water, on Texas' best fishing lake, Open Water Lodge is a five and a half acre point on Lake Tawakini right on the open water. We've got 4,000 square foot cabins that have two bathrooms, two bedrooms, full walk-in, tile showers. You have a big loft upstairs with a great view. The cabins are very comfortable. You've also got fishing literally just feet away from the cabins. The cabins actually sit right on the water. You can actually fish from your front porch. Anyone that wants to, to come and bring their own boat. We have a private two-lane boat ramp. Launch your boat, park your boat. We have charging stations where you can charge your boats. You don't have to book 
Lake Tawak and guide service to come and enjoy this. This is a fully gated private property. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Bobby Garland Crappie Baits and the original Baby Shad and new slab Huntar Minnow. Glacier your glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Balls out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. And by Camus Boats. Tomorrow's tournament boat today. Glad you're back with us. It's time for the Ask the Pro question. This week, Marcus would like to know, what is the worst mistake most anglers make that causes them to lose a big fish? For an answer, we asked MLF angler Mark Daniels Jr. You know, every, everybody gets excited when you hook a big bass or, or, or a fish that feels strong. You know, you, you think you got something really, really big and I think a lot of people try to get the fish to the boat too soon. Uh, a lot of these fish are what we call hot. You know, you need to let them run and kind of burn a little bit of that energy so then that way you can take control of the fight. Uh, a lot of people want to get a fish in a boat, I mean, right now. And in some cases you can do that, but a lot of times you lose that fish. And so if you avoid rushing the bass to the boat, you'll increase your catch ratio by a lot. I don't know what the percentage is, but a lot. Thank you, Mark. If you have a question for one of the pros, visit our website, click on the Ask the Pro link, and send it in. Now let's check out the latest Big Catch of the Week winner. This week's winner in the Big Catch of the Week contest is Joe Cruz from Howe, Oklahoma with this 23 and a half pound striped bass he caught on Lake Wachita in Arkansas. To enter the contest, go to letsfishtv.com to send in your big fish photo or post it on any Tuesday post on our Let's Fish TV Facebook page. Okay guys, on today's show, we were uh, fishing most of the day up shallow. I wanted to show you kind of how we rigged uh, our, uh, our rods today. Basically, I'm using a, a Santee Cooper rig uh, for these shallow water blue catfish. Uh, a couple things that are unique to this rig. First of all, um, I like anywhere from two to three ounces of, of lead. Um, I'm, we're using 30 pound mono down to a barrel swivel. I'm using a sinker slide. And the reason I do that, and you'll see actually on today's show, we actually did this. Uh, on a sinker slide, I can actually pull the bell weight off. That's a two ounce bell weight. I can pull it off. And if I go to drifting in any capacity, and that's a drift weight, and we actually make these ourselves. And actually you can actually YouTube this or Google it, how to make these. They're very simple to make. But I just slip this, uh, this drifting weight on there. Look at there, it's that easy. I'm changed back out. I've got a 60 pound monofilament leader down to an 8 aught circle hook that I keep a file in my boat and I constantly am keeping super sharp and I've got it snailed. The Santee Cooper rig is simply the cork, it's about a two and a half inch uh, peg float and I keep it about four or five inches from the end. And this is a perfect rig for shallow water. Now listen, if you throw it out <laughs> and, your, and your cork floats because it's so shallow, here's a little trick. Just simply slide your cork up to your swivel and then allow your bait to sit on the bottom. We hope you learned something about fishing for giant blue catfish in shallow water. These techniques will work anywhere where blue catfish are found in the entire southern region of the United States. Barry will be back next week, but until then, you guys be safe, have fun, and we'll see you guys next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see more fishing tips, how to videos, big fish catches and full episodes of our Let's Fish TV show, be sure to subscribe right here to our YouTube channel. You can also like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Good fishing out there.